So, what we're doing, continuing on the clearing project here. It'll take a couple days because I want this all done. I would, the original plan was just to pile all this stuff and burn it, but then they wanted a berm built up to keep people out. So, okay. And then the trail. I don't know if I said this earlier. Anyway, they wanted the trail and then they wanted chips all on the trail. Wood chips. It's like a mile long trail. <laughs> First he said six inches deep by 12 feet wide. I'm like, that's a lot of wood chips, man. So we've toned that down a little bit. So all these trees that I'm stacking that are like behind me and not going to that side over there. All these trees are gonna get chipped. And I'm picking trees that are gonna chip easy. Long, straight, 10, 12 inches or narrower. Grab them real quick, pop them in the chipper, let the chipper chip them. You don't have to worry about uh, come on, girl. You don't have to worry about trying to feed this gigantic tree into a chipper. It's not a very big chipper. I mean, it's big, but it's not. Uh, it's not huge. Basically, all we're doing is just optimizing the wood for the chips. And you want good wood, too, that's going to make decent chips. Like, a lot of the dead stuff that's in here, that's just not going to make good chips. So, leave it. Like that tree I just hit there. It's not going to make good chips. So you just kind of knock down, pop the stump out, you're good to go. And my plan is to bring the uh, rut rake out here with the old skid steer. And just rake this whole thing and just rake it right up into the pile. I think they're 
you're just gonna climb alfalfa. It doesn't even need doesn't even need to get tilled in. Lay that stuff out. guys like watching other people go check out Brian Vaughn I think if I pronounced his last name right sorry Brian I actually talked with him last week two weeks ago or something last week he's got a fun interesting channel kind of like myself I think he's a one-man show he just fixed his uh, excavator rebuilt the hydraulic uh,
regular scheduled programming. Open the window! Because it's like 40 out. Oh, it's like 40 degrees. Ooh. Fuck it. Look at the teeth. It's so exciting and it's like 40 degrees out. Snow's gonna start melting. Hot damn! So yeah, the uh, skid steer will get that in here, scrape all this off. Do that like Wednesday. I think Wednesday it's supposed to be like 50 or something. So that'll be good. And then chip everything. Trail, trail meanders through there, kind of goes, hugs the, that's north. It's going to hug the north side about the center of the trail, be 60, 70 feet. Pile all the brush. Built just like a compound out here. It's cool. All that dirt will help with melt snow. All right. Oh, what we got done in. One thirty, eight, four, five. This is about like ten or eleven hours worth of clearing, and we're gonna for now leave these oaks. Maybe take some more off. They're probably gonna come out and take a look at this, but see what they want left or not. But that's that. So I figured I would give you guys my thoughts on the Cabelco. Saw a couple comments already. I think these cabelcos are awesome for me this size is really going to work out well um it's fast it's smooth it's responsive it does everything well it's quiet in the cab it's very quiet uh the cab is really big and spacious and it has a regular door so a big swing out door regular size cab that to me is that's a huge deal to me the size of the cab uh it's it's a great machine yeah it's good on fuel i should it's good on fuel if you run it at like if you run it at number seven one two three four yeah, seven or eight, running on fuel there. And I didn't start with a complete full tank today, but it used less fuel. I mean, I know it wasn't full, because I, I just didn't fill it. I just gave it enough to get me through the day. I didn't feel like fueling it when it was 10 degrees out this morning all the way. But it definitely used a lot less fuel today than it did yesterday because I ran it, uh, you know, lower RPM. You notice it just like any anything. If you're not wide open, you don't have the, the power and the throttle or the power and the uh, responsiveness behind it. But it's still very, very responsive. I think bang for the buck. They're a great machine. No issues whatsoever that I've had with them. This is the second time I've had one of these and likely I'm going to keep this machine all year. That's my plan. I'll be able to give a more proper review you know, halfway through the year. I don't know, 
I don't know what there is to review about it. It's, it's a good machine. Like, part of me also says, too, like, I don't really care what kind of machine it is as long as it starts when I want it to start and uh, does what I need it to do. And uh, if it breaks, it's fixed. Ice in the tracks. Very important to clean the tracks out end of the day so you don't start the next day with frozen tracks. It's gonna look sweet once it's done. Alright, I'm gonna get back here and fuel this thing up. That's what I think about the Cabelco. It's awesome. This is a 140. It is like 95 horse machine I believe. And it is a 35,000 pound, give or take, machine. And it's from Grand Equipment in Grand Rapids. Those guys have been awesome to work with over the past few years. So yeah, I'm out. Thanks for watching.